Welcome back, Travel Advisors. My name is James, joined by Christy Konopaki, as always. This is episode 18 of Two Mediums and a Mic, and you might notice we've got a very important person in the middle, which normally we're typically afraid of, but he has entered our realm. Uh, yeah. Christy, would you like to do the honors and introduce your regional director? Absolutely. I'm so excited to present Mr. Chad Kruger, the director for the Midwest, a fan favorite. Welcome on, Chad. How are you today? I'm awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. You know, listen, I, I take back a little bit that, you, you know, typically you guys are afraid of me. Um, should be no reason for that. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. Listen, I, I follow you guys every and I watch every episode. So now I finally get to be on an episode again. So I'm happy to be here. I think you are our first returning guest. Correct me if I'm wrong, James. Well, You're wrong. No, I will tell you you're wrong because being a fan favorite, I know I am not because I know David Ridge has been on more than once. So, um, no. So th th there we go. So, <laughs> trust me. me fan meanwhile, it a little bit over here. I know. I know who's been on. Meanwhile, we haven't had a chance to get Liz Perky on, but soon come, right? In the next uh, couple of weeks, we have her scheduled. We were just with her uh, in St. Vincent. And speaking of Sandal St. Vincent, I know we didn't have an episode last Monday, but today uh, we are pre-recording this, just so you know. Uh, this is thursday march 21st uh of course chad and christy will be traveling next week so that's why we want to take advantage of this right now but this is going to be our extensive review of our time at sandal st vincent we are going to focus specifically on the resort now we don't have a lot of images to show you and i just want to give a little disclaimer for that for those that are out there and, and pressing your bdms that that are there and trying to get images uh i will say this I would love to, and it's very tempting to take images and I have my, you know, favorite advisors off to the side. I always talk to on a daily basis or weekly and, and I would love to slide an image out to you guys. But at the end of the day, I just want you to remember that Sandals wants to unveil this in, in a fun way and an exciting way and get all of you excited, not just you as advisors, but consumers, of course. And there are people that that is their job to build this up. And if we are to leak that, we are depriving them of the hard work that they are putting into that. So I just want you to remember that part of it. That is that is why we are not showing the images because Sandals wants to put something out there. Now, as you continue to follow us and help us grow, hopefully one day, maybe the next time we open a brand new Sandals or Beaches Resort, we can be the exclusive show to unveil all that stuff. But that only happens with... Uh, the support with you guys subscribing, liking, commenting, all that, and just kind of making this a bigger show. So with that being said, let's dive into it. Uh, first impressions, uh, Christy, we will start with you. Absolutely. So we've been talking about Sandals 2.0 for the past you know, year or so, and that started with Curacao, went to Dunn's, and now seeing what Sandals 2.0 means with St. Vincent, it really took everything to the next level. And I say that with goosebumps on my arms because the moment you step into that resort it is like you you leave the world behind nothing else matters in the outside world it is beautiful you're looking at the beautiful the lights all the decorations you have the wind flowing throughout the main lobby which i loved um that's an all-day thing so you know it's six o'clock at night and the wind's still still going a nice light breeze but i think what i loved most when i first got there was just the view you know, I w we weren't sure what to expect and we get into the lobby and you see, you know, the beautiful Caribbean on one side and then you look behind you and you see the mountains. So it's the best of both worlds with with the view from the resort. Um, but I won't steal too much of the thunder because I know Chad is itching to talk about his thoughts as well. All right, Chad. So tell us what were your initial thoughts? Yeah, listen, I what I love about it is all the hype that we have. It, it's it's legit hype. Like, it, you know, from the moment when you pulled up and you just saw the quality and everything and just really what we're looking at doing, um, just kind of even had a different vibe, different feel, um, but pure luxury, in my opinion. I mean, everything from the finishes to the colors to, you know, just everything that we saw was really that next 2.0 level that Christy was talking about. Um, and just 
things that we've never seen before, we've never done before. It's exciting to kind of see that new new version of everything. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was it, it was it was exciting to get down there and see everything, and, and and it totally hit the mark on exactly what I was. I mean, kind of blew me out of the water a little bit on just everything that we did see. You know, something that I kept saying to a lot of people back home is it, is it, uh, and I said this to Olivia Rodriguez a few times, and she kind of agreed. It feel it feels like we dropped a resort in like some sort of valley in Colorado that also has a tropical beach behind it. Like the it's way surrounded by mountains, is. which is yeah. cool, you know. And that's something that you never really see where you've got you know behind a lot of it, it's surrounded by mountains, and you look like Chris was saying, you look one way. You know, and at night you can see the sunset, which is spectacular. And then you turn around, if there's a little rain, you've got beautiful rainbows behind. I mean, it's just, it, it's nestled in that valley and it's just, it, it's it's fun, you know. Just yeah, kind of it's very, beautiful. very, almost so much pi- picturesque, it feels fake. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, agreed. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a complete extensive walkthrough of uh, the arrival. So we're going to start with the airport process. But for those, this is going to be great for audio listeners. There's not going to be any videos or photos. You're going to have to flip back and forth. But because we're not showing any photos or videos, guys, that means we're going to need to be a little bit more detailed than usual, right? We can't just gloss over. So let's start with uh, Chad. We'll start with the going, getting into the airport. You know, we leave the Miami airport. You arrive at St. Vincent. Of course, we're pretty excited just give your feedback and what uh, advisors can tell their clients what to expect upon arriving. And we'll also talk about departures here as well. Yeah. I mean, I mean, honestly, it was, it was, um, I don't know if I want to say better than I expected just because I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect from the airport. Um, it is a newer airport, so it was nice. You'd be able to got to go right through and kind of getting through customs and immigration, all that uh, seemed to be pretty, pretty seamless. Um, they had, you know, plenty of, you know, immigration officers there kind of going through everything. And, you know, when, the nice thing about it is you're not having three, four or five planes at a time landing. Um, so it's just really whatever your plane is on, that's who's going to be kind of funneled through. So um, I thought that process was pretty seamless and pretty easy. Um, now, I will say I kind of got stuck in the back of the line, which I'm OK with. Um, and then when it got through going through the final stuff, they saw everybody in the sandals gear and they kind of let us go through the crew entrance. So I was cool with that um, but <laughs> experience, all the rest of it. But um, yeah, I mean, I thought it was it's a small airport, but it, it was clean and, and it was cool. And yeah, I, th- I thought the process was pretty, pretty seamless. And Christy, what about you? I'm going to backtrack a little bit. And that is only for my Midwestern advisors out there who are listening Uh, We can't beat around the bush with this subject about how are we going to get down to Sandal St. Vincent. So what I did was I flew on American to Dallas. I overnighted in Dallas and then got the first flight out to Miami and then to St. Vincent. And when I tell you that it was seamless, I got to my hotel, had enough time to have, you know, a long nap, which made me feel a little bit refreshed the next day and um, got out to... Miami. And then I was on the resort by 5 PM. So, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing to have that overnight. Your clients are going to be refreshed. They're going to be ready. Um, so just keep that in mind, sell that as a good selling point rather than as a setback. Cause you know, they're going to be refreshed the next day. Chad's like, yep, she's hitting that on the tee. But, um, I thought found it interesting. So when we landed in St. Vincent, here's a tip, um, sit on the right side of the airplane because you're gonna have those amazing views. Now, the left side still has amazing views, but if you're on the right side coming in, you're seeing that island um, when you're landing. And then once you land, I noticed that, so the front part of the air, uh, aircraft, you would get off in the front doors, and then the back half, you got out of the back end. So that also made it a little bit quicker for everybody to deplane, which I thought was great for that. Um, and then once you were in, it was a quick, easy, through the airport they asked you maybe a couple questions in immigration and then before we knew it we were sitting on the transfer all ready to go excited to get to the resort now i do want to point out for those asking uh, what about immigration form there was no form to fill out online ahead of time and there was no form given out on the plane and in fact there was no form at all right they actually just kind of asked a couple of questions as you went up to the window not sure if that changes in the future but as of now that was the experience for us now the departure side of the airport uh, I do want to point out kind of one negative I thought, but I also heard there's a remedy for this. 
So when we all went to check in, uh, a lot of us noticed that we had to get to the airport and get a paper ticket because it said that they didn't have any electronic stuff. And I just kind of foresaw, foresee that as a little bit, it's just going to take it's just going to take time. Like you said Chad, it's it's one or two planes going out of there. It's not a major airport, right? So you're not going to have 20 pl- 20 planes worth of passengers trying to leave. But I also found out later that the reason we had to do that is just because their electronic ticketing was down that day. So I guess that is something that they typically have, so if th- that could speed up the process, but outside of that, um I thought that the it's kind of like if you've been to Turks and Caicos, imagine you've got the downstairs with a lot of the terminals and then you have the upstairs with a few more terminals plus the, the like food and kind of snack area, except like way nicer, it, it, you know, not to, to downplay Turks or, or anything like that, but just like not just a row of seats like tables and booths. And it just had this more up, upscale enhanced feel. Uh, your guys thoughts on this? It was very cool. I, I agree. You know, it, it was when, when we went upstairs, it was kind of it was all open, you know, and it wasn't crammed. Like you said, and there's obviously normal areas to sit, but there was places if you wanted to grab a table and grab something to eat, you know, and, and you know, spread out a little bit. And it didn't seem overly crammed because once again, it's it's really just everybody that's going on that one flight that's taken off. So, um, yeah, I thought it would, worked out really well. I mean, I got some French fries and they were good. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was very clean. Um, it was it wasn't too loud in there either because it's a very big open space, and it wasn't like too loud. It didn't sound like a cafeteria or anything like that. Um, there was booths where you could sit. Um, There's outlets so you can you know work on your computer, whatever it might be. Um, so that part, you know, having outlets, a, a little bit more space. Um, I think there's two food options there um, to purchase some food before you go. But if you're like me. I had lots of snacks in my bag. I ate before I left the resort, so my tummy was nice and full. So I, I didn't have to try any of the food there. But, you know, what I liked as well is since we were upstairs, I noticed that um, we had a jet bridge to enter the plane. So we weren't outside. I know some people like to um, enter the plane outside. It's kind of a cool experience, you know, seeing the plane up close. But it was an air-conditioned jet bridge. Not that we always need air conditioning. But it was a nice little touch before before we left. So, um, that was interesting as well. And then one thing I just want to point out, uh, unless I'm wrong, Christy, a lot of the plugs and outlets I saw around the airport, they you do need the converter. Correct. I didn't see any American plugs. So that's something to maybe let your clients know. So let's talk next. Christy, we're going to start with you. The all important, this is the number one question I get all the time about a resort, especially if they hadn't sold it in a while or they're kind of coming back to something, the transfer. The transfer. You know, the dreaded transfer. Let's talk about the timing. Let's talk about uh, was it nauseating? Kind of what what it, you know the 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 pros and cons. And then uh, Chad, I think there's an alternative also if if they want to go into that. So Christy, your your initial thoughts? Yeah. So I am somebody who's always so excited. My adrenaline's running. I'm high energy whenever I get into that transfer because I like looking out the window and seeing all of the views. So. I think they said it's about 15 kilometers away from the airport, which I'm not um, educated in kilometers, but it was a 50 minute transfer ride. Um, We were on a Saturday at 3 p.m. around that time. So traffic was quite minimal during that time. But when I tell you this drive is beautiful, I'm not just telling you that. I mean, the whole time we were on the transfer, everybody had their phones out taking videos and pictures of the incredible views that you have from the transfer because, you know, you're driving up and down these mountains. So you're at the top of a mountain at one point and you're overlooking um, little bays where there's all these boats, there's the colorful colorful buildings. I even, um, if you're familiar with Europe, I even mentioned that it reminds me of like a little bit of the Amalfi Coast uh, because how colorful the buildings are and how they're all nestled into the mountain there. Now, James, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, people getting nauseous. Now that's going to depend on who you ask, right? Um, so myself, I had, I don't get nauseous or anything. And so I was good to go looking out the window the entire time. And it's funny because when we first arrived to the transfer, you know, the guy said, Usually it's about 50 minutes to an hour. So I looked at the time. I was like, okay, it's this time. And when we arrived, it was exactly 51 minutes. So he was spot on with that. 
It's very similar to St. Lucia. So if you're familiar with the St. Lucia transfer, I would say the experience uh, similar, except one thing, I, I think the road was smoother. I think it was an extremely smooth road where I think St. Lucia can be a little bit bumpy. Uh, Chad, can you... I, listen, I, I can speak to it because I'm one that gets very nauseous very easily, right? And um, I was actually just fine on this transfer. And I think mainly because, you know, the difference between here and St. In St. Lucia, they're they're driving fast. Like, they are yeah. looking at it, right? Here, I don't think we got over like 25, 30 miles an hour. You because can't because it's so windy nice little windy road. So it, it actually, I, I was perfectly fine with it. Um, and I joke, it's like, you know, it takes 50 minutes and you go like seven miles, right? Just because <laughs> the time went up and then down and then up and then down. But it was a beautiful drive, a beautiful transfer. Um, and, and I think what, what helps is because you really can't go that fast. Exactly. Um, it makes it a much easier drive. And like you mentioned too, about the roads, super smooth. You're not dodging potholes or anything like that. So they've done a really, really good job with, with maintaining everything um, for just kind of having, you know, a, a two lane road throughout that entire Island. So for somebody that does get nauseous very, very easily, I, I, I think it was just fine. So I did good. I yeah, exactly. And then of course there's uh there's rumors of a water taxi being introduced soon by Island, Island roots, right? Correct. I know we've heard that as well too. So I don't know exactly where they're at with that, but it, there are some options that they've talked about with, you know, being able to have that, water transfer just kind of like they do in st lucia now as well too mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens now we get to the resort and of course we unload we're right there at the lobby and we we get our song and uh they're amazing everybody's super friendly you can tell that the team is excited and they're ready to get going and of course you know normally chad we go to the resort and it's kind of like hey you don't have to do this you don't have to do this i'm here i'm here for you know i'm here for work i'm only here for a couple of days let me just get to my room but this is probably the first time where I was like, you know what? They probably really are looking forward to practice and just putting some of this stuff in, into work. And, uh, we, you know, you get the full resort tour and, and they give you the full breakdown. You let them go through their whole, whole spiel. But it, it was hard. Honestly, the lobby, it's like they took Montego Bay and everything that maybe that Adam Stewart is every time he goes into Montego Bay and he's like, man, we could have done this. Or what if we did this? Or what if it's like he took like a bunch of years of ideas and put it into practice with this lobby, right? It's the same concept with the open air. And yep. then while these people are trying to talk to me, I'm just like, oh, uh, look at it all. Like, I can't stop looking at the mountains. I was there for two days and I did the whole thing. So the lobby experience for you guys, it also has uh, the piano bar. Uh, the club sandals is around the corner from there. Uh, and before, before I do want to point this out, before you actually get to the lobby, as you're driving through off to the left is where our big conference room is for, yeah. so for any mice groups and things like that incentive groups. That's actually nice that it's its own building and not just some like room trying to jam pack through. So you actually kind of get out of the resort, not out of the resort, but just kind of out of the main resort area and you have your own area and that, that looks phenomenal there. So your guys' experience as far as just getting into the lobby. As I entered the lobby, love the cold towel, really just, really just was so nice. Um, and then, of course, they had the welcome drink. Check-in process was, as always, flawless. So they gave us all the stuff. We filled it out. And then before we knew it, uh, they were taking us to our room. So it was a quick and easy process to get checked in. And, of course, that whole time, you're just in awe, again, of all the little details in there. The high ceilings, the the lights that are probably the size of, oh, my gosh, I don't even know what, what to compare it to. Um, but amazing time to check in and just really take it all in in the lobby. I agree. You know, I had the wind blowing through my hair, so it was nice to feel that breeze. <laughs> and um, no, I, I like the open air concept because we and David, you and David Ridge concept. both, right? Yeah, yeah. No, but it's nice because, like I said, then you, you, your your eyes are going right towards the resort and just kind of how they did everything. And it. it's just it's very inviting. Um, doesn't feel like you're in a stuffy lobby or anything. Um, but yeah, I, they they did a phenomenal job with the bar there and the piano bar there and just kind of everything kind of centered around that little area. And it, it's going to be a fun fun spot on a resort as well too in the evenings. I think too. So, it, it's yeah, great job. So you get through the lobby and I just kind of want to give the lay of the land a little bit. So off to the left is your kind of high rise more. Uh, I think they go up to the fifth floor. There's three or four buildings there. And then off to the right kind of starts a lot of your villa village, I, I would say. And that, that kind of in, in encapsulates that as, as the pool 
is all of the attention and it is right in the middle. But then the way that the resort is set up, and we'll, and we'll start this kind of as a walkthrough, immediately as you get, you kind of, if you go off to the right of the pool, that's where you've got your first set of restaurants. And Chad, did it remind you of any of our resorts that we have, kind of how these restaurants courtyard feel is set up? I mean, kind of, yeah. I mean, you look at it even San Luis South Coast where they have all the restaurants kind of in one area, yeah. you know, and I like that too. And it's it's not just in that area. It is broken up a little bit. They kind of have two spots with the restaurants, but um, yeah, it was an awesome little courtyard. And even in that little courtyard, they've got the bar and a bunch of seating and couches and everything and kind of to be a little, you know, an entertainment section as well surrounding all of that and the rum bars over there as well too so strategically repl- repl- yeah they've got the plaza bar bukan jerk shack bloom coffee shop gatsu gatsu and then the rum bar and then also that's where the resort shop is kind of section in yep. there yep. and of course like you said they've got that entertainment uh stage they reminded me a little bit of um emerald bay that stage that they have kind of over there by the by the by the bar Yep. Uh, kind of an elevated stage. And it's just a big open courtyard, like you said, with all these seats and stuff. Christy, your your take on that area. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lively area. When we were doing our resort tour, she even mentioned, this is going to be the lively area. So, you know, lots of space to hang out, um, to watch the evening entertainment. I'm sure they're going to have, you know, events over there. Um, but I really liked how they are centrally located because, you know, you kind of are... You're between mountains where this resort is. So it is going to rain, which is not a bad thing um, because they have all of these different events and activities for you when it's raining, which we'll, we'll get into in a little bit. But having the restaurants, you know, centrally located all in, you know, a little bit of a close area, which is nice for when it, you know, decides to rain a little bit. Now, we'll talk about the the only swim-up bar, I believe, is in the main pool section. We talked about this a little bit before we started recording. So you've got your big pool there. You've got a hot tub at the end of the pool. And then the other restaurant section, uh, you've got Crema, Imora, Isola. I think Sora is over there, right? Um, I'm loving listening to you pronounce these um, I'm just trying restaurant to, uh, names. Listen, do you know the better pronounced Miss Island Routes? From the Midwest, all right? Crew shot fired. Shots fired. <laughs> um, and again, Chad, you mentioned that the, this other section, and I was not fortunate enough to get to eat in both sections. I was at Gatsu Gatsu, which was still amazing all the nights. But you, uh, both of you actually had the Italian the first night, right? Which was in this other courtyard area. Can you guys describe kind of that that setting and that feel? I mean, it, first off, it, it took, Christy a good 20 minutes to get into the restaurant because the sun was setting so she was in full <laughs> selfie mode and trying to capture a lot of the pictures and capture the moment so um once every once once the sun set and everybody got it no it, it it's a it's an awesome area because literally the sun sets right there so you've got all these restaurants in and there's going to be a boardwalk with, with water underneath so it's like you're you're in this whole new little world but then you're at the beach club over there but from a food standpoint it, it was spectacular i mean you just we immersed it we went to sora um we had the italian menu and it was it was spectacular and, and we, you mentioned earlier in the lobby like people kind of going through the process like it was fun because they're they're still going through the training and we kind of got to be the guinea pigs a little bit um but the excitement that everybody had to finally start, you know, taking all these months of training and implementing it was was a lot of fun to see as well, too. But that area is going to be very popular, in my opinion, you know, right, you know, for those sunset portions of it and during the day, um, just because it's it's once again, it's another gathering spot, gathering area that's kind of like feels like you're on the boardwalk right on the beach. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was cool. I had the chicken parm. It was delish. <laughs> I'm still dreaming of the tiramisu. I will dream about that until the day I get back there. Yeah, yeah. And I will say too, I'm gonna. I gotta point out, I'm. I'm. A, I'm a. I am a, a connoisseur of calamari, and the calamari was spectacular. Was. Um, it, it was cooked perfectly. Wasn't. I mean, so they, they're they're really bre- elevating that uh, F and B, you know, to the next level at this resort yeah. with all the new concepts, and they're really hitting it out of the park. And one thing I really liked, I, I think you hit the nail on the head with that boardwalk feel. Yeah. You know, I've, I've lived out in California, Santa Monica Pier and, and all that. And it, it really does have this, it, it is going to have, of course, we didn't see it in its full glory, right? With full of guests. But I can imagine that's just going to feel 
like a it's almost like you're like where are the carnival games it's gonna have that vibe to it but i like both restaurant settings because it pulls you away from the room side of the resort like you feel you like you've gone to a completely different section of the resort each time you step in one of these areas. And I think that's going to be really, really unique and something that I, I can imagine a lot of the sandals in the future is, as they, as, as we grow is, is going to have something very similar to this. Uh, one last point on, you know, how it, we're talking about gathering in these areas is we have to talk about the beach club area. Um, it's, you know, a newer concept that is coming into the brand where it's, you know, it's not just your bar. They're going to be serving food throughout the day. It's going to be, you know, your fun atmosphere uh, during the day, a little bit of a beach party vibe. So I'm excited to see that really come to light and really fully come together. And one thing I, I didn't notice because I didn't eat over there, so I saw this on the tour, was at Butch's, uh, Chad, correct me if I'm wrong, but there is an event space above. So I can imagine where you have Butch's that is obviously, <clears throat> you know, everyone's worried about getting into Butch's. But if you're sending a group, especially a mice group or something like that, that is something that you can probably pre-organize and, and have your group setting at Butch's right right above the restaurant there. Yeah, there was a lot of, like, just even, even in, in Sora, there was another room there too for bigger groups too. So I think what they're doing is setting that up for that experience a little bit as well for some of those group functions, which would be great. Which is great because it also pulls those groups away from, you know, the couples that are trying to have a more romantic evening. Because let's be honest, as soon as you get a group of eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 people, it becomes, you know, it's their group. Of course they want to have a good time, but you also have clients there that are trying to have their romantic evening, their honeymoons, their anniversaries and stuff. So to being able to separate that and pull them, but still get the same food and dining experience, I think is instrumental to what we're doing going forward. Absolutely. And then of course, you've got the two story villas at the end there. You've got the overwater chapel there. Uh, they're going to have a dock where a lot of the excursions, you know, water-based excursions will will pull out of there. Now let's talk, uh, let's just kind of briefly go over the rooms. We're not going to go die, deep dive into them too much, but the one thing that I want to point out is usually in the villa area, Chad, you've got maybe a club room, a butler room, and then that's it. They're all the same. I I think I saw eight different room setups, like concepts that were all incredible. Uh, there was the one with the 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 tub in the middle with the it's, it's like a whole. I'm pretty sure the shower room was bigger than my room. <laughs> Of just this one villa and it had separate showers when you got it like it was ridiculous at every resort i've never seen rooms like this before right never the mm -hmm. sheer size of the rooms I, I i was shocked on and like you said we went into i don't know 10 12 different everyone was different i was like oh, we're gonna see another one and i was like oh that's why like this the layouts and the setups and that one you're talking about with those glass doors that open up and you got this massive yeah. tub with rain showers but i'm like that was that's like the size of a normal hotel room mm -hmm. just for the shower and the soaking tub so you know the amount of private plunge pools that each one of those villas have so it it, it makes you feel like you're you kind of have your own little cottage or condo when you're going on vacation versus just some some room or suite and even the ones that are in the five-story buildings i mean those rooms are massive you know, some of the ones that have the, the, the fitness, you know, rooms and yeah. the media rooms, everyone was a little bit different. And each one had something just that was kind of that oh wow moment for, for, for every one of them. And it was, I've never seen it at any one of our resorts. So these rooms are definitely first for us in, in, in and every, every one of them doesn't mm -hmm. matter which one. Now, Christy, your take on the rooms and just in general? You know, I was really surprised that every single room at this resort has a soaking tub. So you're going to have a soaking tub no matter which category level you are in. You're going to have that soaking tub, whether it's inside of your room or, you know, on the uh, out, outside of your room. So I love that concept. Now, for me, I think it was all of the little details that truly went into the design of these rooms from the throw pillows that they have on that they take on and off, you know, during I felt like I was at home. I was yeah, like, I was like what are these throw pillows? What do I do with the throw pillows? <laughs> right. It's all good. Yes, the throw pillows to the furniture to the little details like the speakers that are put into the room or, you know, when you're leaving, they put a little baggie of lavender that with a note that says, um, what does it say? Um, come back soon or something along those lines. Soon come back. Soon come back. Yes. So mm -hmm. you can put that into your bag. So, you know, you, you open your bag when you get home and you 
ooh, fresh lavender. <laughs> you know what's crazy is I had no idea what that bag was. I was like, why did they just put this bag of ash next to my bag? That's such a guy thing. <laughs> hey, listen, Ashley Cooker, Ashley Cooker did not know what it is either. So I'm not taking the soul blade, but I had no idea. But it, but somebody was like, did you smell it? I was like, no, why would I smell that? But I did when I went back to my room and I was like, oh, it does smell nice. So I, I did exactly what you said. I was like, I'm going to throw this into my dirty suitcase. So when I get home, it doesn't smell so exactly. bad. So all- and it did work. It did work. I was impressed. Good. Good. I'm glad you're learning. Um, but, or the, <laughs> the little chocolates on arrival, those were a nice touch. Um, they're starting to produce cocoa in on the island. So it was nice, you know, to really bring some of those local elements into the resort. And I could talk all day about how they're incorporating, yeah. you know, the local aspects into the resort, which I think is so unique. I'm so excited to go back and experience it fully. Um, but Yes, the room's absolutely incredible, and every single room is going to have a view. So, you know, you might be looking at the beautiful Caribbean. You might have the Caribbean and the mountains. You might have the mountains. Either way, you are going to be just absolutely blown away by some of these views that you're going to see. One thing yeah. to point out is, you know, we, we when we did the resort tour, I was looking at the factory that they have, which, yes, it's not out there yet. They're finalizing it. But some of the rooms were standing there, and it said, you know, garden view. And I'm on the fourth floor and literally all i see is ocean so i was i was like is, is, is that a t-? but they're that's kind of how they're you know they're really making sure that the, the, whatever that description is or that view is is exactly what you're going to get you know so yes you got straight on i had this garden view but just looking this angle i could see the ocean completely yeah um, i couldn't take my eyes away from the mountains anyway so yeah so it's it's it's, it's awesome yeah now, before we say goodbye, I do want to give a little disclaimer because I want you to have your clients prepared. Uh, let's talk about the outlet situation in the room real quick. Uh, next to the bed, you've got a couple of American plugs and you've got USB ports. And the other nice touch that I haven't seen this at the other resorts, and, and maybe I'm wrong, I just didn't notice it, but they've got a USB-C port right. as well, which I thought was great. So you've got your regular USB-A, you've got USB-C, so kind of future-proofed as everything seems to be trending towards USB-C. So that's a really nice touch. And then there's a handful of uh, European style plugs. And the one thing I just want to make aware for your clients, there are no outlets in the bathroom. Yet, yet they are coming. Yet. So keep that in mind. They're working on that. I specifically asked that question a few times yeah. so I could <laughs> really, but really. Until that happens, I, I just want you to have a plan for your clients to understand that if they are someone that is typically they need to stand by the sink and they're using a blow dryer, curling iron, something like that, they need to be prepared that there are no outlets in there. And, you know, um, there's a mil- we could go, I can do an entire episode on tech, tech, techie things. Everyone knows I'm, I love all my, my toys and my tech toys. I could do an entire episode on what you could buy your client. If there's no outlet in the bathroom, there are ways around it. There are cheap alternative ways around it that if you're prepared, but that's what I just want to point out to make sure that your clients are prepared and that you can, you can make sure that you're on top of it. So it's not a shock when they get there. Uh, outside that and final thoughts, Christy, we'll start with you. Final thoughts. That's hard because the three of us, we could honestly talk all day about this resort. We could talk all day about the experience we had, but just know that your clients are going to be in very, very good hands. They are going to have an experience of truly a lifetime. So, you know, if it's a matter of us hopping on a call and talking to your clients about it, we are more than happy to do that. You know, maybe they're like, I don't know about the overnight. Tell them to call me and I'll convince them to, you know, don't be afraid of that because uh, let me tell you, this is just, it was blown out of the water. So so excited for everybody to get down there. If you have clients going soon, let us know in the comments because we want to see that. And if you don't have clients going, start sending them there now. Like I said, like now is the time to book this resort because I can tell you it will be full when, you know, it gets out there, the photos, etc. So take advantage of all of these specials that are on now. Uh, so you're, you and your clients are going to be happy. For me, I, I would say... First of all, listen, I'm talking to my advisors too that always talk about this. Oh, my client, they just don't, they have to take the early flight. Listen, you book pre-nights for cruises all the time. Just put your head space in, in, in the same area. Get your head in that area and understand that like, hey, if you want your client to have the best ultimate experience, book, book a pre-day in 
Miami, send them to Atlanta, send them to Charlotte, whatever that gets them so they can get to Miami and be rested. But don't just send them there to Miami at midnight and get a hotel room. Do something, have a dinner, have an event, do something there. You can combat that. You can make it easy and you can make it part of their vacation ver- instead of being a deterrent of their vacation. As far as the resort, it's, I immediately text my wife when I got there. I said, I can't wait to bring you here. This is, I've never, as someone who's traveled all around the Caribbean and lived in the Caribbean, uh, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, I was blown away the entire time. I'm a lot of my advisors know I try not to recency bias is a thing, right? What's your favorite sandals? What's your favorite sandals? It's almost always recency bias, but this, this has raised a bar that, you know, it's not just the rooms. It's not just the, the service and the locals and had the atmosphere of everything that I felt there, but just the view alone is something I had never seen before. I'm excited to get back and uh, Chad, your thoughts on that. Listen, it's I stand by this all that I had overnight going down as well, too. It affected nothing, right? Um, people, if they're coming from certain areas, are going to be used to it. But I stand by it. If, if it was easy to get to, it's not going to be paradise, right? I apologize for the dog barking. But it, if people want this type of experience, it's not going to be easy to get there. And that's what you have to sell your clients. This is this is a one-upper destination. This is a bucket list trip for a lot of people. They understand that sometimes it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get there. So um, I had to overnight on the way down. I didn't have to overnight on the way back. So it's, it's one additional night. But you build that in and it's all about the experience to be able to get there and be able to be relaxing with it so it, it is 100 percent worth it um you know it's the same thing with even some of our other destinations i have to overnight to get there but clients rebook it all the time because they forget about that a lot of times we think that it's a problem um but it's not right so it's all about building that experience this is going to be that this this property this destination is 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 most people have never experienced in their lives and if you want to be able to make a lot of commission you want to be able to have some happy clients send them here reach out to your bdms sell this destination because it's only going to get easier to get there as we add more flights as we get more people on board um the the, the people of the of, of saint vincent and the grenadines are excited that we're there Every there's so much built around this, you will not be disappointed. But um, sell it and and have some fun with it, and, and we hope to get everybody down there as much as we possibly can as well too to experience it because this 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 is this is a one upper property, um, and it brings that 2.0 to a whole new level. So we're excited to to kind of continue to feed this resort, and yeah, listen, just just get your clients down here because you will be a hero. All right, guys. So as we say goodbye, please don't forget, I can promise you this, uh, as you're watching on probably the Facebook channels or Instagram channels, go to the YouTube channel and subscribe, comment, follow all that, because we do have something coming at the end of the year. And that is going to be involving the people that are most interactive with us, uh, specifically on the YouTube channel or the audio podcast version. So if you're listening to on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, something like that, comment, rate the show, uh, but the people that interact the most, that's who's going to be involved in with what we have coming at the end of the year. Chad's Chad, like, what is he talking oh, about? Can, what you do? Can I, involve, can I, can I interact <laughs> quick? Uh, Chad, I, I imagine that you and David will be highly involved at the uh, at, at the end of the year. This hopefully all the directors as well uh, <laughs> that we can get you guys there. Um, but again, that is all I can t- remind you. I'm just going to keep telling you, you know, Interact on those pages because I don't want to get to the end of the year and someone go, well, how come I wasn't invited? Well, how come I wasn't invited? It is the people that interact with our channel. So thank you guys so much. This has been episode 18, a quick deep dive on the Sandal St. Vincent experience. We have some Island Roots stuff (laughs) coming up later and uh, we will see you guys next Monday. Bye. Bye.